130th Contact, Saturday, May 31, 1980, 218 m pages 466, 484. Billy says this is pleasing, that you finally appear once again. You were probably on vacation. Samyaza says you are very peculiar and strange. Everything about you seems to me to be without any feeling. What has happened with you? Ah, now I feel it. It. It is so painful. What's the matter with you? Oh, that is terrible. You are completely empty and blocked inside you and you emit an icy cold. Billy says you notice absolutely everything. Samyaza says even your voice sounds so peculiar and strange. Please come here to me and let me discern your inside. Billy says as you wish. Just don't be frightened by it. Samyazura says, this is awful, dear friend. You are completely destroyed inside you. You are no longer capable of feelings and they are all destroyed. Just what has happened with you? Awful, you are like a living dead person, like a mechanical, psyche-free robot. All feelings are dead inside you and not even a tiny impulsation can be perceived or felt. Tell me, just what has happened? You are no longer a human being but only a machine. Just how are you able to live like this? Billy says that is also a mystery to me. Samyaza says just how has this terrible destruction come about? You must resolve this soon, for in the long run, you won't be able to survive in this state. You are destroying all your vital functions of the organs and the whole body. Billy says I know, but I can no longer change it. I don't even know how I was ever able to do it at all, to accomplish such destruction inside me. I am only aware that I blocked all my feelings, as I very often had to do that in order to cope with all sorts of things neutrally. But I then did that more and more intensively, until a very nasty and damned cold rose high in my chest. But it was then already too late to turn back, and I also could not find a way back. Since then, an icy pain sits in my chest, which sometimes makes me half mad. But all that leaves me so unaffected, as also everything else that approaches me from the outside world. There is simply nothing at all that can claim a feeling or some other impulsation from me. Samyaza says a mechanical robot. I said that, yes. But I know exactly that there can only be one reason for that if you have enforced this in such a way as you just explained to me. Moreover, it can only be that you have operated this work of destruction of your feeling centers for several weeks, for such an insanity is not possible in a short time. And an act of insanity was your doing. Billy says I also know that, but I simply couldn't help it. Samyaza says sure, I understand already. The reason for this can only be that you must have been faced with the decision to neglect a truthful love. But you could only have been forced to do that. Is that of correctness? Billy says why do you ask, then, if you already know it? You are damn illogical, if I may express this once with your own words. Samyaza says the expletive however, doesn't come from my word usage. Billy says so what if that is just from me? Samyaza says you are rather rough in your language. Billy says how can I be otherwise? Samyaza says of course, if you are no longer capable of feelings come here, I want to know it exactly. Sit down here. Billy says what do you want? Samyaza says you'll see. Billy says then so be it. Samyaza says good, now wait a moment. Billy says what is that on the screen? Samyaza says screen. Billy says I mean the display screen. Samyaza says that is the schematic of your feeling centers, which I have stored here. Billy says so, and what do you want with that? Samyaza says I want to create a comparison with the feeling centers of your present condition. Wait no oh oh, but that cannot be true. Oh dear, this is terrible. This is much worse than I thought. Billy says what is it, then? Samyaza says don't you see? 
Billy says no. Samyaza says that's exactly what scares me so much. Billy says I don't understand. Samyaza says the viewing screen, it records no impulses whatsoever. Billy says that's what I meant, that I don't see anything. The display screen is blank. Samyaza says that it is, and that is so awful. Billy says and what does that mean, then? Probably that everything inside me is finally kaput, right? Samyaza says you talk about it coldly and without any connection to it. But only now do I understand. You are absolutely dead inside, for you are no longer capable of emotional impulsations. Now I also understand that you cannot find a way to resolve this destruction. That would be impossible for you. Billy says it also makes no difference to me. Samyaza says do you not know, then, that a person cannot live in such a state, that his life will be ended within a short time. Billy says of course, but so what? Sometime, I would have to resign anyway, right? Samyaza says of course, you know that, but my question was illogical. Since you are, indeed, no longer capable of feelings, this knowledge is meaningless to you. It is just a fact without content, completely without any connection to you. Billy says and? Samyaza says I must change that because you can no longer help yourself. Billy says that also makes no difference to me and on the other hand, I'll now finally get away from all vexation. Samyaza says that would please you so in your present state, although, I also wish you peace at last. Billy says then it is, indeed, in order. Then in a short time, I will have probably made it. Samyaza says so simply you imagine that. Billy says sure. It really couldn't be any simpler. I've thrown down the pickaxe for myself, and now it should remain lying quietly and rot. Samyaza says I, however, may not allow that and you know why. Billy says those damn laws, to which you are obligated. Samyaza says sure, and you shouldn't hinder me from fulfilling my obligation. Billy says I don't want to anymore. Samyaza says it would be quite pointless if I would now speak of feelings in your state, as you are, indeed, no longer capable of them. Love, however, isn't solely a matter of feeling, for it reaches into the spiritual levels, namely where the fine spiritual perceptions wield their determinations. Billy says but only if this love is real and if it already exhibits forms that have reached universal levels. Samyaza says right, that is so. Your intellect and your rationality function clearly and sharply. This form of love is present with you, otherwise, you couldn't face me without me receiving harm. Your vibrations, if it were otherwise, would hurl me away as you come towards me. Through this love, you regulate your vibrations that could become dangerous for me in the negative case. Because your intellect and your rationality still function perfectly which, in a short time, in two to three months would no longer be the case, you act completely automatically and correctly in your spiritual love. And precisely here lies the factor that I want to address, in order to be able to help you. Think rationally and with understanding about being or non-being. Billy says you ask a damn lot from me. But on the other hand, I don't want what you want. Samyaza says I beg of you. Billy says that doesn't move me, however. I think it's better this way. Samyaza says damned crap. Damn it. You probably cannot be persuaded anymore. Billy says you are fantastic. You can suddenly curse, and moreover, you have a bright red head. You now probably have a great anger in your belly, a human child, this was really worth it, that I let you fumble around in me. Come here. Do it already, before I change my mind. Samyaza says you I'm sorry. I, I'm hurrying. Billy says I'm sorry. This is really interesting and new, and I off. Samyaza says do you feel better again? Billy says oh. Girl, what was that? I suddenly had such a damned pain in my chest that I thought I would go directly to hell. What was that? 
Semyaza says by this button here, I relieved you somewhat unexpectedly of your consciousness for 16 minutes. With the press of this button, I projected the stored feeling center schematic into you, namely through this tiny triangle here, even before you sat down. It. Billy says you mean that there under the display screen? Semyaza says sure. You probably didn't notice that before. Billy says no. Semyaza says you see even if you had said no, I could have helped you. Billy says would you have? Semyaza says sure. Billy says but that would have been a use of force. Semyaza says naturally, but it would have been an act of logical force, because if you had said no, then you would have only done that because of the influence of your self-destructive will. Billy says ha, huh, and now I feel as ever before. What you are capable of? But was this really all that you did? I really cannot imagine it. The feeling center schematic shouldn't be enough for such a thing, right? But somehow I really feel like a human being again, and, oh, come over here. There. Semiaza says yes, you are again just as before. Billy says you are probably kiss addicted. Semiaza says you are very sparse with it, so it is a special, great joy to me each time. Billy says girl, be careful, because if certain people hear that then I'll have all sorts of trouble and even the devil around my neck. Semiaza says it will even be read, because it will all be transmitted by me for the report. Billy says oh, you blew 13, even that still. Well, then so be it. But now tell me, what was it that you did? Semiaza says you are right in assuming that I had to do something more. The projecting in of the feeling center schematic was carried out in a radiation-based and vibration-based manner. This means that the schematic penetrated into you through radiations, in order to expand circularly in vibrations in the feeling center in a sort of miniature explosion. This caused you such a bad and great pain in your chest that was pervaded by an icy cold, due to the sudden warmth owing to the refunctioning of the feeling centers in such a sudden form, that you thereby lost consciousness. The process for this only lasted less than a second. During your consciousness-related absence, I used the vibration shock to put your entire emotional life, which is also stored with me here and which you, in your terms, would probably call a citogram into your feeling centers by means of several trillion data impulse vibrations. Through this, your completely immobilized emotional life was newly activated and began to work again in the old manner. Billy says it all sounds so simple, but for you to be able to do this at all, that requires a lot. Semiaza says it would be far too time consuming and too complicated, if I should explain even just the basic details to you. Billy says there is no need for that, but I want to thank you very much for your help. Only now do I feel how terrible my condition really was. Semiaza says sure, you can do this only because you are mighty and your world of feelings again. Billy says that is clear to me. It was really terrible and if I had a mortal enemy, I myself would never wish that one such a thing. Semiaza says I understand what you mean. But please, never admit yourself into such things anymore. Billy says I will guard myself, but in the foregone case, I simply could not act differently. I also wasn't aware that I would find no way back from it. Semiaza says you really could not know that but if you would have thought about it more thoroughly, then you would have at least got an inkling of it. Billy says I had that, yes, but I was so ready that I didn't particularly pay attention to it anymore. Semiaza says what, then, was the real reason for it? Billy says I was upset, so to speak, down to my blood. Semiaza says and of course, you were driven to this in an irrational and irresponsible manner, which cancels nothing of your own mistakes made, however, from which you have obviously already found out that which is instructive to you. Billy says you write. I don't want to excuse my idiotic actions, but I was really driven to it by a rather bad coercion. But I would like to talk about that sometime later, 
without everything becoming public. Semiaza says as you wish. Billy says good, then we can talk about something else. Why did you no longer come for so long? I called you many times, but I didn't receive a response. Semiaza says we were all absent. We had to leave unexpectedly, and there wasn't enough time to inform you about it. We didn't arrive back here until a few hours ago. Billy says that's almost what I thought myself. Thus, you probably don't know what all has happened with us in the meantime. Semiaza says no, and I would be grateful to you if you could later tell and explain everything to me. Billy says oh, it wasn't so much, and you can get the most important things much more quickly and in greater detail from the monitoring disc, I mean from the recording device. Semiaza says I cannot do that, unfortunately, because during our departure, we failed to insert larger recording elements, which is why now only a single month is recorded. Billy says and when was this element at the end of its power? Semiaza says at the end of the month of March. Billy says that is bad, because then exactly that incident isn't recorded, about which I wanted to know a few things. Semiaza says and what was that? Billy says once again, one has tried to blow out my life's flame. This was now the seventh time. This attempted murder was the seventh in Switzerland but the eighth overall, because the first attempted murder took place in 1964 in Marolai, India, with which Billy's left arm was shot through. Witnesses Billy's teacher Monk Dharmawara, Po Cheng, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Mara, Mrs. Fisk and Miss Crystal Rogers. A later witness of the gunshot wound was, among others, Reinhold Geiger from Germany, who is still friends with Billy to this day. Note 2004. Semiaza says I warned you early on, and therefore, it cannot scare me, especially since you standing in front of me without any harm. What exactly happened and when? Billy says it was on May 11th, at 10 midnight. At this time, I was sitting on a sofa in front of the house with Wendell Stevens. Suddenly, a very quickly emerging lower back pain warned me, as so often appears with me when danger threatens me. This time, however, it was so strong that I was no longer able to stand up and get to the bottom of the matter or go to a place of safety. Wendell Stevens could only say to me two or three times, there is something wrong. I wasn't able to do anything more while I was writhing back and forth in pain. Then suddenly, just a few centimeters to the left of my head, something banged into the stone wall and spatted me with mortar, while just a tiny fraction of a second later, a shot banged. Then I knew, of course, that yet another time had come. But then, after the shot, it still took about ten seconds before I could stand up again, after which I then called Jacobus and searched the area together with him and Wendell. Of course, in vain, because as usual, no one could be found. When we then examined the hole in the wall about ten minutes later, Gilgamesh found the bullet, which had rebounded off the plasterwork on the wall and which was completely flattened, behind the sofa. In my opinion, it was a revolver bullet of the caliber 7.5 mm. A pure lead bullet. The bang of the shot also pointed to a revolver. Semiaza says if you hadn't continuously moved because of your pains, then you would have probably been hit or was it not so? Billy says he fired past my head by at least 8-10 centimeters. A damn bad shot. That one should first learn to shoot a little if he wants to do something like that. If he shoots wide with a revolver from a scanty 35 meters, he obviously shot from the Semiaza tree and misses my head by about 10 centimeters, then he should let himself be embalmed along with his lead syringe. Semiaza says you probably have no respect at all for such dangerous things. That could have really been the end. Billy says hell no. That one should first learn to shoot. Semiaza says do you know who it could have been? Billy says no, no idea. I only suspect that it was a man. Women very seldom shoot here through the area with revolvers at such distances. 
Besides, it was nearly night, and women don't get around to shootings of this kind then. But still other facts point to the fact that it must have been a man. One thing I have to leave to the guy, though he has damn good eyes. Semyaza says um this incident of all could not be recorded. Perhaps we could have finally found out something, in order to have success in these things at least once. But on the other hand, I already warned you in the month of October, 1978 and also later again, that starting from the month of May, 1980, you should be extremely careful. I also told you that you should move your workroom. Have you done what is necessary concerning this? Billy says no, there weren't enough finances for that. I already had to go into 50,30 francs of debt, so that I can set out this summer for filming and photographing, if you can keep your promise. Semiaza says your new devices cost that much. Billy says yes, along with a small tractor and trailer as a means of transportation. Semiaza says that is more than a fortune for you. Billy says you said it, but there is no other way. Semiaza says at any rate I will do my best to ensure that everything comes about as you hope for. Billy says that is good, but tell me, I forgot to ask before why, actually, have you all been absent for so long? Semiaza says we were very busy and, indeed, very far away. Billy says what do you mean by, very far? Do you speak according to your understanding or according to mine, in which case I must talk here on earth of a far journey if someone flies to the moon? Semiaza says according to mine and, at the same time, according to an earthly sense. Some of us were in the Dal universe, while others were on the planet Venus. Billy says what had they lost there? Semiaza says they were and are still occupied there with a peculiar phenomenon which has happened there and is still happening. Billy says what was that then? Do I have to beg once again for any information? Or is it, perhaps, a secret? Semiaza says no, it's not a secret. It simply concerns that on the planet Venus, a peculiar process began about four years ago, completely transforming the entire planet. Billy says interesting, but I can draw no conclusions whatsoever from that. What's with this process? Semiaza says as I already said, it was about four years ago. At the time, enormous elemental storms started on the planet, which changed nearly the entire surface of the planet. Enormous masses of dust were thrown up and drove through the very dense and extensive cloud layers into free space. How this was possible, however, is still absolutely unknown to us, because naturally speaking the gigantic cloud layers would have had to absorb the millions of tons of dust and throw them back to the planet's surface mixed with water. In a direct path, however, the dust that arose from storm erosions left the planet and drifted to the sun. By this, the dust was burned up over the sun's outer envelope and was destroyed. By the drifting off of this planetary matter, however, and by similar movements of enormous amounts of dust on the planet Venus, it changed its entire surface to a very great extent. Tremendously deep rifts and valleys were excavated, while on the other hand, also huge mountains came to light, ranging up to about 12,30 meters high beneath the cloud layers and layers of steam. Billy says that is so incredible. If I remember correctly, the highest mountains were only about 10,30 meters high about 5 or 6 years ago. Semiaza says sure, but this has completely changed in only about 4 years, and it isn't to be expected that this will soon fall to a new change. Billy says then it could remain so in the future. Semiaza says sure. So far, we only know that the whole process was triggered by the sun on the one hand, but a long and very thin, extended arm of that huge dark nebula, toward which the Sol system is drifting, played an even more important role. Billy says by that you probably mean that dark nebula that drifts between the constellation Hercules and our solar system and toward which we are flying? Semiaza says yes. Billy says how is it, actually? 
Will our system certainly drift into this dark entity? Semyaza says so far, it seems so, yes, but the amount of time until then is still long. Billy says but I now don't understand two things on the one hand, that millions of tons of dust could penetrate through the Venusian clouds and also go out into space, because if dust gets into the clouds then it connects to the tiny droplets that constitute these clouds or make them up. This then means that everything together must fall back to the planet's surface. On the other hand, I also don't understand that the dust, as you say, drifted towards the sun and was destroyed there, because an extension of the dark nebula. Semiaza says listen to me what you mentioned with regard to the amounts of dust in the clouds, that is of good correctness. But now, as we found out, which I already explained, many millions of tons of this Venusian dust drifted up because of gigantic storms, by what means an opening arouse in the cloud cover. However, this could only happen because magnetic storms, triggered by various 